Good morning again. Um, my name is Roel Sargent. Um, I am the CEO and also the lead designer uh, with Turbo Broker. Um, joining me today as part of the panel is uh, our sales manager, Carlin uh, Burkett. And today we're going to be presenting the Turbo Broker Customs 5 software. So thanks again to all of you for, uh, for joining, and I hope that you'll find this presentation useful and, um, and look forward to working, continuing to work with you uh, on the Turbo Broker Customs 5 product. Okay, so let's move on, uh, moving to the first slide. Uh, so this is the agenda for today. We, we have an overview. Uh, we're going to look at the brokerage module, other documents module, so the various modules included in the Turbo Broker Customs 5 um, application, as well as uh, we're going to look at some pricing and promotions that we have on um, currently. Uh, also, we'll the prone map and some additional you can access. Overview of Customs 5, as, as you know, the latest release of our Customs Brokerage software. Um, it includes several major enhancements to existing uh, version 4 software, and it's, uh, it's a result of several months of development and includes some valuable feedback from, from you, our customers, and partners. Um, uh, you know, so our Broker Customs 5, as I mentioned, it's, it's, it's a lot of development effort went into it because we've basically done a ground up um, approach to developing uh, version 5. So, so we, haven't, we haven't just added on to the version 4 product. We've typically um, developed the entire package using a totally new um, a development tool that will take us into the future, basically. So with Turbo Broker Customs 5 as the foundation, we can now add on to that. We can now build on that some really exciting new features and so on to, to basically take us, um, take us into the future. All right, so it's, it's, a, it's a ground up approach to the uh, development of this, this, this uh, release of the software. Um, new database technology and, and so on. All right, so it's a totally new uh, new new design, and 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 that's one of the reasons it took us a bit longer um, to get out of the door, um, because we've done a, a, a lot of work on this on this release. All right, so moving on to the next slide. Uh, so this is basically an overview of the uh, um, of the of the Turbo Broker Customs package. So we have. Uh, we have the brokerage module um, that, is, that, that is part of the package, as well as other documents, um, services module, payment module, and accounting module. So the, the Turbo Broker Customs package essentially ties all of these different modules together, right? It's not just a customs declaration or brokerage, but you also have other, other aspects of your business that it's, it's, it ties together. Um, again, the approach as, as we've always uh, taken is um, a comprehensive uh, customs uh, brokerage application that allows you to perform more than just uh, customs brokerage. Right? It allows you to perform all the tasks that your business requires as part of a, of a brokerage house or as part of a brokerage department. Okay, so it has all of the other um, components that you'll need to help you to prepare uh, your documents. All right, so moving on. So, so we're going to get into some uh, screen, screen layouts, uh, and as we go through the different um, layouts of the, of the new software, we'll touch a bit on, on, um, on what it's telling us. So this is the main interface for the Turbo Broker Customs 5. Um, <clears throat> as, you, as you can see, it's, it's a full screen. It's a full screen layout compared to version 4, where it was just um, a, a smaller, a smaller um, a screen size at the top left of the screen. So now it's, it's full screen. Um, you have your various uh, buttons there that identifies the different, um, the different option. But one of the pieces I want to just point out on this screen for, um, for now, and we'll talk more about it later, 
is the piece at the bottom, the information at the bottom that says um, company and the name of the company, right? And that is actually a new feature that we've added to the software called multi-company. So essentially, um, with, with a centralized install of the software, you can now use one install, one centralized install to, pro, to, to provide brokerage services to multiple companies. Okay, so let's say your, um, your main office has several, uh, you, you know, the main head, uh, 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 company has several subsidiaries and they all have uh, customs brokerage requirements then you can have a central install and then you set up each, each um, subsidiary as their own company within the software. And that allows each subsidiary to manage their own um, customs brokerage activity uh, separately instead of having to do all within the one system. Okay, so that's, uh, that's, that's the multi-company um, feature. It also allows you, allows companies to be in different countries. So all the companies doesn't have to be within the same country, okay? So basically it's a multi-company, multi-country um, feature. All right, so moving on, the brokerage module. Um, essentially the layout of the brokerage module is, is, is the same as the existing um, layout today, but with several, um, several pieces uh, 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 added, added onto it. So you're looking at the, the main um, screen here, looks very similar to uh, what you have in, uh, in version 4.0. But what you'll notice at the top, when you come into the brokerage module, you can also access the warehouse manager as well as the costing manager, right? And we'll talk more about those two um, in a minute. But essentially from, from within the brokerage module, if you, if you have those other components, um, uh, if you have the license for those other components, then you can also um, access those, those features from right within the brokerage module. All right. Uh, um, one of the pieces based on feedback that we've, we've, we've received as well from, from customers is um, the, 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 the charges that apply to a particular declaration. So in version 4.0, at the bottom uh, right, just where you have the customer info um, box and the import exporter box, um, we had in version 4.0 the fees that are applicable to, to that particular declaration. Um, based on feedback from users, um, uh, some customers would prefer that the, the user that is inputting the, the, the information um, does not necessarily um, have to see the fees that are being charged. So what we've done, we've moved that, um, that fee information to a different module called the services manager module, which we'll talk about in a minute, right? So from the brokerage side, um, the users will not see any fee information. And, and so you can separate the functions of users that are inputting information um, from those users that are responsible for providing services and managing those services as well as um, managing the, the receipt of payments and so on for those services, okay? All right, so let's move on to the next uh, slide. So the warehouse manager. So if you click on the, 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 the button at the top that says warehouse manager, this is, gonna, this is gonna take you into the warehouse manager screen. So let's talk a bit about warehouse manager um, for those of you who are not um, familiar with it. Um, <clears throat> uh, whether, you're, uh, pro whether you're performing brokerage function company or you're providing um, brokerage to clients, um, you may, you may have a requirement to um, manage a warehouse. And, and by that I mean when goods are brought into the country on a warehouse entry, um, those goods would typically go into um, a, a bond, some kind of a warehouse um, in, in bond uh, store um, or, or some, some, some form of, a, of warehouse where um, at that point in time, you're not paying the duties and taxes, okay? 
um, at a later point, you would then want to remove goods from those warehouses, either on an import entry or an export entry, depending on, on the type of, uh, of warehouse or bond that you have. So what the warehouse manager allows you to do is to bring those goods into your warehouse, right, on a warehouse entry, so it tracks what goes into warehouse um, initially, and then it allows you to remove those goods from warehouse um, using an import or export entry. As you remove items from warehouse, the system then tracks um, what was removed from a warehouse and what remains in warehouse. Okay, so at any point in time, you can, you can um, come into the warehouse manager look at the, the warehouse, a particular warehouse entry, and you can see various information about what went into warehouse in terms of the number of items and so on, um, what was received, uh, what was invoiced, what was received, and the quantities remaining in warehouse. Um, and if you click on certain tabs, such as the removal tab and so on at the top there, you will also be able to see what was removed from warehouse on, on what, what entry numbers those goods were removed from warehouse. So you can actually track what goods, uh, the goods that were taken out of warehouse and the entry numbers on which they were, they were taken out of warehouse, right? So it's a full um, management of that, of, of, of that particular warehouse. And you can, you can manage if you're providing brokerage services either internally or to different, different clients, you can manage several warehouses using, using this, um, this module, okay? Um, if, you, you know, if you're a broker providing brokerage service, this is something you may want to discuss with your, with your clients because they may actually be looking for this functionality um, and, and just don't know that it's, it's available, available to them, okay? All right, so that's the warehouse manager. Um, the next screen talks about uh, uh, manual removals. So when you're removing items from warehouse, there are two, two approaches you can take. You can manually remove those items, in, in which case the system allows you to select the particular warehouse entry that you would like to remove the items from. So you basically find that, that warehouse entry that, uh, that, was, that was initially used to bring the goods into warehouse. Right, and then you locate which items and the quantity you, you input the quantity of items you would like to remove from warehouse at that point in time. All right, what the system does it, it drops those items down to the bottom of the screen there, showing you what you've selected to be removed from warehouse. Okay, so it, it gives you the opportunity to select manually, item by item, what you would like to remove from your warehouse. Um, the next approach to warehouse removal is an automated approach. So let's say you have a point of sale system or some, some um, accounting system that allows you um, uh, or provides you with uh, some, some uh, electronic file of the items that were sold that day. Meaning you, you, now, you now have to subsequently create the customs declaration to present to customs to say these items were removed from warehouse and they were sold. If your internal system is able to provide you with a, a, a specific formatted Excel file or, or, or it's able to provide you with the information and you then take that information and fill it into a template that that we, uh, we provide as part of the software, you can then use that, that templated file to automatically remove items from warehouse. So let's say for the day, your point of sale system um, or the customer's point of sale system sold uh, 500 items. And so you have to now remove those items from warehouse and create the necessary customs declaration or present, uh, to present to customs. You can have those 500 items in an Excel spreadsheet and simply um, by, by importing that Excel spreadsheet, the system's go going to look into the warehouse database 
um, to locate those items and automatically create the um, customs declaration for you. So you don't have to manually um, remove each, item, each, of, each of those 500 items. Um, once the system locates the items, it then adjusts the warehouse quantity um, remaining as well. So it updates the remaining quantity in warehouse as well as creating the customs declaration for you. Okay, so those are the two approaches to warehouse removal. You have the, the manual approach where you can um, go into the system and, and, and manually identify the warehouse entry you would like to remove the items from. Um, and you have the automated approach where you can present the system with an Excel spreadsheet and the system will perform uh, the warehouse removal for you. Okay, so um, moving on. Uh, the next module, Thing Manager. Here again, we have um, a module that we've broken out. In the past, we've had the costing report sort of as part of the brokerage module of the, the, the declaration reports. Now we've broken out the costing manager separately. So essentially, for each shipment that is processed, um, you can move that shipment into the costing um, into the costing manager. So you can you can decide which shipments you would like to prepare costing reports for. Okay, and by and by moving those shipments into the costing manager, you're telling the system that these shipments um, are the ones that you're interested in preparing costing reports for. So you can have 20 customers. Um, 20 clients that you provide customs brokerage services to, but only 10 of them require costing reports. In that case, only declarations for those 10 clients need to move into the costing manager, and the, the other 10 you can just um, ignore. Okay, so you can essentially decide which shipments you would like to move into the costing manager. So once those shipments are moved into the costing manager, um, the system now allows you to calculate um, unit landed costs and, and various price levels for the items on, 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 um, on, on, that, on, on that particular shipment, right? Again, you may have certain clients um, who are preparing uh, these costing reports today and they may be using um, um, some you know, manual or, or semi-automated approaches that is very time consuming. You can provide um, this as a service either to your internal business or to those, um, to those clients um, that you provide brokerage service to, right? So you can actually add this as, as one of the additional functions that you perform for your clients. Uh, you know, it's up to, up to you whether, depending on your setup, um, whether you apply a cost state or not, that is totally up to your, to how you want to manage this particular feature. But the, uh, the feature is there to allow you to provide or, or to prepare costing reports that you can then um, uh, give to your clients, whether your clients are external or internal. Um, we're going to talk a bit more about how the, 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 the calculation is done um, in, the next, in the next screen and, and a few others. So this is an example of a costing profile. So what a costing profile is, um, and you can set up multiple costing profiles um, within the software, and you can even set up um, costing profiles on a per-customer basis. So let's say um, you spoke with one of your clients. And, and this particular client would like to cost their items in a certain way. You can set up a costing profile for that client, right? Or it may be a case where different items or different shipments you would like to cost um, in a particular way. Again, you can create a separate costing profile for those shipments. And what the profile does, it allows you to add certain additional charges to those shipments. In the current version of the software, you're not able to, to um, 
to label those charges yourself. They are, they, those charge, the charge names are predefined for you. In this, in this new version, you have up to 15 additional charges that you can, um, you can predefine um, and, and give the names that you want to use as part of your costing calculation, right? And, as, and, and then once you've, once you've created those charges, you can then associate those charges to the, to, to the, the different costing profiles. So for example, the one we're looking at here says you would like to add bank charges, right, to, to, as an additional charge to this particular declaration. You would also like to, have to, to add handling charge, storage charge, and transportation charges. Now, these values that you're looking at, these values can either be um, uh, fixed values or they can be auto-calculated. So, so that is another feature that we've added. So your bank charge now, right, can be, can be, can be um, set to be 5% of the CIF, or it can be set to be $500, right? So you can set up those charges um, however you want to set them up, right? And let's say you set your, your charge to be 1% of the CIF then the system will automatically calculate that 1% for you. So that 17 that you're looking at, it, it doesn't necessarily have to be a fixed amount that you input, but rather an auto-calculated amount based on how you've set up that charge, that particular charge in the software. Okay, so now you have the ability to, to, to add fixed charges as well as auto-calculated charges. All right, as part of your um, as part of your costing calculations. Once you've identified the charges that you want to add to the ship to the shipment, the next step would be to tell the system how you would like the unit cost to be calculated. All right, and here again you have some flexibility in in telling the system. Um, I, I want to in, in calculating my unit cost. My starting cost or my base cost, I want it to be the CIF. But it doesn't have to be the whole CIF. You can tell the system, I want, a, I want my base cost to be 0.99 of the CIF or 1.1 of the CIF. So that's where the factor on the right comes in. So right now the factor is set to one, so which means it's gonna use the whole CIF. But if you set that factor to 0 0.9 or 0 0.8 or 1.1 or 1.2, then it's going to multiply that factor by the CIF and use that as your starting point in, in the unit cost calculation. And then as you go down, you can say, in a, I want to add to my starting value, to my starting CIF value, I want to add all the charges that you identified on the left, right? Screen. So now you can basically um, you can basically tailor the unit cost calculation to to meet the specific client needs or your specific internal needs. Okay. So there's a lot of flexibility here. Again, there's several functions you can use. There's add, there's multiply, there's subtract, divide, and so on that you can use. In, um, to, to, to tell the system how to calculate the unit, the unit cost for that shipment. And then the next screen goes, uh, does, does something similar, but this time with the price level. So the price level here again starts with the unit cost that was calculated previously. So once you've calculated the unit cost, the price level is gonna start there, and then you can, you can tell the system um, I want to multiply that unit cost that was calculated by one to come up with my first price level, which is which is essentially a ten, right? Um, and then you uh, for for price level two, you can say I want to multiply by one point two or one point one five, right? You can give it different factors or or even um, additional functions. You can apply additional functions to that base unit cost value to arrive at your various price levels. Okay, so here again, you not only have 
um, flexibility in adding charges, but you also have a lot of flexibility in calculating the unit cost as well as um, the, the various price levels. Now, if you look at the bottom of this screen here, um, the pricing screen, you will see the option to, um, to update price set. Right? So what this is saying is you're telling the system to update your item catalog with the price information that was calculated as part of the costing manager. So once you've generated this costing report, you can actually tell the system to not only generate the costing report, but to also go back into your item catalog and update the, the item catalog with the, with the price information that was calculated in the costing report, right? And, and this is what your, your catalog looks like in the next screen here. So you have your item catalog um, updated automatically from the, from the costing manager, right? And it also gives you a, a history. So you're able to, by looking at this, this costing uh, slash pricing information in the item catalog, you're able to see um, the, the lowest or the last price that you've paid for an item, right? And the different price, the different price levels um, that were calculated. So you have the unit costs as well as the, the various price levels. Um, and then you're also able to see the lowest, the lowest price and the, the, the particular declaration that um, that lowest price uh, was imported on as well as the highest price and the associated declaration that that particular um, price was uh, um, calculated on. Okay, so you're able to see um, a snapshot of the, the last, the lowest and the highest, as well as if you click on the transaction history, you'll see all the different um, price information that were calculated over time for a particular item. So as, as many times as you've imported a particular item, you're able to see um, the various price information for those, for those items. Okay, so that's the costing manager. Um, lots, of, uh, lots of new features here and also you know, reports to go, to go with it.